to Engage, a family gaming podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Engage, a family gaming podcast. This is episode 148. Man, are we getting close to 150. And my name is Steven Dutzman, and I am your host, as always. This is the official video game and board game podcast for EngagedFamilyGaming.com. EFG is a website where parents like myself and my co-hosts come together to give parents and families the information they need to get their family game on. This is a very special episode, not only because we are kind of heading back into the video game land, but because I am joined by my BFF, the Dr. Rachel Coward. How are you? Hello, I'm good. How are you, BFF? I um I am better than I have been. Um been having a rough couple of weeks. Um but there is nothing that brings joy to my heart quite like having you on my podcast. Oh. Um, and I'm happy how to be here. and how great is it that we randomly met because your PR person sent me a random email and I actually responded. If it wasn't for that, we the would, magic. You, it would have been just the magic wouldn't have happened. No. So, so we're going to talk about a couple of things. This is going to be an interesting podcast because, um, so it's going to be a slight hybrid podcast. You know, everybody that listens knows we alternate board games, video games. Um, we're going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about Spider Man. Okay. I have been playing a lot of Spider Man, and you're going to listen to me talk about it. I hope you okay. don't mind. Um, no. And you just recently went to PAX West, so we're going to talk to you about your experience there. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, as our topic, you're going to talk to us about your very first experience playing Dungeons & Dragons (laughs) with a bunch of fellow doctor nerds, it sounds like. Yes, yes, yes. Oh boy. All right. You didn't tell me this is what we were going to talk about, but I'm ready. Uh, well, I mean, listen, what else would I bring you on here for except to talk to you about Dungeons & Dragons? <laughs> yeah, um, probably because uh, I've picked your brain about violence and addiction. We've gone through the table of contents of your book, which, by the way, is called A Parent's Guide to Video Games. It's on Amazon. Buy it if you haven't. Um, it's it's cheap, folks. Just buy it and give her, you know, get, just help her out, okay? And then make sure you review it because that's probably more important than the money from the book, guys. Um, so... Anyway, before we go too much farther, I do want to thank everybody for listening this week. Uh, we do hope the games you've been playing have been great. I'll tell you what, I've been playing Spider-Man, and that's probably my game of the year, so it's been great for me. Um, we do want our podcast to be more interactive, so what we'd love you to do is like us on Facebook. That's EngagedFamilyGaming.com slash Facebook, or Facebook.com slash EngagedFamilyGaming. Funny how we made that work. And um, send us a message there. One of our admins... We'll filter that question right on over to us, um, and we would love comments, questions, or topic suggestions, because, you know, we always love ideas, and we want to talk about what you want to talk about. So, obviously, this is a video game week, so, the you know, primarily, we'll be talking about video games. Um, but like I said, we're going to dabble in Dungeons & Dragons later, but don't worry, that'll be after the break. So, if you want to take a break from the board game stuff, that's cool, you can wait. So, um, Doc. Yes. It's time to go around the horn. Um, you told me that you went to PAX, PAX West and played one game. Okay. Which amazes me because every time I go to PAX, I play more games than I can possibly count. What was the one game you played at PAX? Uh, it was called Into the Garden or In the Garden. Into the Garden, I think. It was super Why do we cool. have to guess on stuff? I have the internet. You, go you on. have the internet. Um... It is an adventure game where you control time. Oh, so you, you mean, don't? Yeah, it's into the garden. Wait, into I the don't garden. Think so, hold on. What? I'm looking. Hold okay. On. It's something like that. I'm looking. Go ahead. You control time instead of the characters. So you have an objective in each level. It's like a little adventure puzzle game, but rather than um, controlling the little characters on the screen, you make them go back and forth in time to you get the reactions in the company. talking about the garden between. That is exactly what I'm talking about. I knew that's what you were talking about. And you know what? This is a Dr. Rachel Cower game. Like, if I were to imagine, (laughs) like, a U game, like, this is what comes to mind other than World of Warcraft. Um... (laughs) 
So and it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Okay. Yeah. So how long was your demo? Did they let you get a good meaty chunk in it, or was your demo no. like two minutes and then they kicked you off? Yeah. Two minutes. It's, Although it's hit or yeah. miss with some of those indies. Sometimes you get in there and they just let you play because they don't know any better. Because they are not PR people. They're just the designer sitting at their booth. Um, and they just let you go. And then sometimes it's like with an iron fist. Yeah, I mean, it was my first PAX. And it's my understanding that West is the largest of them. Uh, there were law lines. Law lines yep. for everything. So, yeah, only got one in. But Regardless I went to a lot of good panels, so we can talk about that in the second part. Yeah, we abs- well, we can talk about that. We we can talk about that briefly. So let's talk a little bit more about the Garden Between. So, um, so you had a brief demo. Let, let me bring up the tail of the tape for this one. Um, it is uh, coming to Nintendo Switch, PlayStation Four, Steam, um, and Mac. When is it coming out? Uh, on September twentieth. So, uh, by the time you are listening to this, uh, we, we you will be approximate. Nope, this is going to be out on Friday, oh. the 14th, I think. Yeah, 14th or 15th, something like that. So, um, it will be next week when this game comes out. This is, it is a time-hopping, really super surreal adventure puzzle game. Um, this is one of those games that, well, let's look on Steam and see how much it's going to be. Because I think this is going to be one of those, like, $20 ones. Yeah. Um, this is definitely not going to be, like, a $60 game. Um, you know what? It doesn't have a price listed. I think, though, he said there were only 12 or 14 levels. I can't imagine it's going to be that much. I would bet that it's, like, $20. This is probably going to yeah. be around the same price as, like, Gone Home and stuff like that, which is, like, 15 to $20. Um, it looks like it's that style of game. I wouldn't expect it to be anything more than, like, 40 But, like, what I would recommend is go to YouTube. If, if any of the... If the time travel adventure puzzle game interests you at all um i would definitely recommend uh heading on over to the youtube and looking up some of the trailers um because i think it will give you kind of an idea um what you you know kind of what you have coming to you um i'm looking for esrb information right now um well it's peggy three so that means that the EU, which I, in my estimation is usually a little bit more conservative, has said that this is appropriate for three-year-olds. So I don't expect that we would get much more variants, maybe E10+, plus, that kind of thing. This is probably not going to be a very, you know, this isn't going to be a content problem for most folks. Um, this, this is These kind of games, like these venture puzzle games, tell me if I'm wrong, these are the kind of games that you can absolutely give one person the controller and let, let the kids tell you what to do. You know, yeah. Let them tell you know. Let you be the controller for them. Um, I think, Although, yeah. If you have a three year old that can like play that game, uh, let me know because they are gifted. Well, I had a hard time in my two minute demo. <laughs> if a three year old well, can pull off you, that game, that's rem- impressive. Remember, Doc. Yes. The ESRB and the Peggy ratings are about content, yeah. not difficulty. Okay. Come on, you literally wrote the book on this crap. That's true. You literally wrote the book, which I have to get around to doing also. I should probably do that while I'm in between jobs, huh? Um, You should. um, I probably should, but the problem is I was halfway through it, and then you sent me your book, and I was like, well, I can't. I don't (laughs) want to fill up the use in this. Um, That was a a dark – that was a cold punch. I shouldn't punch a man while he's down, but what are you going to do? Um. But uh, I'll put my own spin on it. We'll just be super sarcastic the entire time. You were very nice and loving and caring, and I'll just be like, <laughs> whatever, guys. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, so that is The Gardens Between. Um, I've had my eye on this one, too. I didn't know it was coming out this soon. Super surreal. Um, nice hand-drawn art by the Voxel agents. Um, so um, I want to talk a little bit about Spider-Man. Are you familiar with who Spider-Man is, Dr. Rachel Coward? <laughs> Oh, please. I know that the Batman games have been dominating, and now all of a Twitter is saying the Spider-Man game is where it's at, so it must be good. Let because... me tell you, um, do, you have, do you have a PS4? I do. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> I think... Spider-Man has to happen. I, I mean, think I... Spider-Man has to happen. To be honest, I think it's happening right now upstairs. With okay. Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, this game is is really darn good. Now, a couple things I want to throw out there that 
a lot of folks probably don't know, um, this game is rated T for teen. It mm. earns that rating. Okay. Mm. So in gen now with that said, Spider-Man Homecoming was rated PG 13 and it also earned that rating. And most of us took our kids there. So, mm. um, you know, it is a Spider-Man story. It is Spider-Man is all get out. It is intense. There are some darker themes, some of that stuff is going to go right over your kid's head. There's just going to be Spider-Man swinging around New York, punching dudes. Yeah. Um, but um, there is that. You know, we can't avoid the fact that this is not a kid's game. With that said, it is an amazing game. Um, right now, I see very little standing in its way, uh, with maybe the exception of Super Smash Brothers in December from it being the EFG game of the year. Mm. Um, I have never... I, I play lots of games where there are, like, maps with all sorts of collectibles on them. Assassin's Creed is a very, <laughs> you know, like, that's one of those things. You open up a map, and there's just all sorts of stuff to do. I never do that stuff. Um... I am systematically doing everything. I'm probably going to get the platinum on this, um, which I am not a trophy dude, but I think I'm going to do it because it is just so darn fun. Um, you know, every collectible, there's just enough of them. They are clearly marked on the map, um, but they are, uh, you know, but they're they're interesting challenges. Like there's a thing where you have to chase this dude, this crazy homeless dude's pigeons. <laughs> to get his pigeons, and they those pigeons fly fast, and you got to swing to c catch up with them. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's awesome. I mean, it's really good. And meanwhile, like it, it's it, there are other things where you have to like search on the map, and you know, it's it's really cool. Um, they really created a very interesting cityscape. I want to be careful and say that it is not a open world. Mm -hmm. Um, we have been people who have played the witcher or have played grand theft auto or who are going to play red dead redemption two in a, you know, a month or so like those are living, breathing worlds period. Um, this is not, um, I was the first day I was playing, Evan was watching and he was like, dad, like they said, this was an open world game, but like you're Spider-Man and you like jumped on the roof of that P uh, that the roof. And there were all kinds of people on that roof and they didn't, like, react to the fact that a superhero just landed on the building and, like, jumped away. And he's like, why didn't they react? And I'm like, mm -hmm. well, you know, because it's New York. There's lots of superheroes there. And he's like, Dad, that sounds like that sounds like this just isn't a very good open world. And I'm like, okay. So it's just, so it's not. With that said, it's a great cityscape to explore. The web swinging feels so darn cool. It is. Nice. That is the highlight of this game. Um, the combat is also very fluid, very fun. Um, I, f I fight everything that I can just because I want to, like, it feels very satisfying. Um, no gore, no blood, no guts. I mean, this is Spider-Man. He punches dudes and webs them. Most of your attacks leave your enemies like webbed and stuck up against walls. Um, which is awesome. Um, they shoot the crap out of you, but you know, there's no blood. You just fall over. Um, again, this is a great game. Just came out on PS4. It is a PS4 exclusive, so unless you have a PlayStation, you're not playing this one. Um, but, man, is it really good. If you have a PlayStation and you have kids that remotely like Spider-Man, this is this should be under the tree at least. Um, I can't recommend it enough. Um, fun fact, though. Um, and I have to give credit to uh, Brian Altano. That's hash, uh, that's uh, at Agent Bizzle on uh, the Twitter. He made a recommendation for the appropriate way to play this game, um, and I'm going to add the caveat if you are a grown-up. Now, what you do is you go into the settings and you turn the music volume all the way down. Then you open up the PlayStation Spotify app, <laughs> and you look up I Love 90s Hip Hop and get that playlist and start playing that now swinging around New York City and, like, beating up bad guys, etc., while, like, Mob Deep and Notorious <laughs> B.I.G. are playing is a very different experience than the <laughs> normal, like, orchestral soundtrack. Because it normally has, like, this very Avengers-esque orchestral soundtrack, um, which is super cool. Um, un so, for the grown-ups listening, 
unless you have an aversion to 90s hip hop, at which point, what is wrong with you? Um, Wu Tang Clan also makes a very different, it makes the fight scenes like very different when like <laughs> Beckett Man is like rapping in the background. Um, it's very different. Um, but it is, um, it just makes it way more intense. I don't know why, but I really actually enjoyed it more. I just can't do that when my kids are watching because language. Um, other fun fact, you play as Mary Jane in this game. Ooh, um, interesting. Voiced by Laura Bailey, who has done a number of other things. And I will say this much, uh, for those of us that are adults that enjoy story, um, this game takes place eight years in the future after Spider-Man is Spider-Man. So this is not an origin story. He is an adult. He has a job. Uh, he and Mary Jane have been together, and they have since broken up. And she knows who he is. So he lives with this, like, crushing secret that his ex-girlfriend knows who he is and is a reporter for the Daily Bugle. So, at any time, she could just put him on blast and kill him. And that ad- that that subtext was not missing for me. And so their interactions definitely are, like, a little weighted, you know? <laughs> um but they have this interesting, you know, I'm not done with the game, but like they really have some really cool interactions where it's like, it's not a will they, won't they thing. Cause I mean, I'm sure they will eventually cause it's Spider-Man and Mary Jane, but, um, the way they interact, like they communicate via text message, which is very 2018. Um, and you know, like the level of panic that he has when like his text messages are misunderstood. Um, and stuff like that. This is a modern take on communication and relationships. And um, Mary Jane and, and Peter Parker have been, you know, like they're one of those like comic book couples that like just people who are into comic books just know about. Peter Parker, Mary Jane, that's just what it is. So to have their relationship kind of moved into the present, I think is very interesting. Um, and I can't wait to see what actually happens. I mean, I'm sure like, what the end result is going to be, or at least I think I'm sure. Uh, but watching them, you know, follow the breadcrumbs um, is really cool. And the voice acting is amazing. You know, for those of us that really enjoy that stuff, the voice acting is amazing. It's believable. Um, Mary Jane looks like a real person. You know, sometimes Mary Jane in the comics is not a real person. <laughs> um, the Mary Jane in the video game looks like a real woman who would live in new york city you know like she's got the red hair but she's got the scarf and the leather jacket and the boots and like you know she looks like a normal person with like normal proportions who knew that they would actually do that <laughs> um whereas like in the comics she's a bikini model basically i mean what are you gonna do i mean whatever that's comics that's it we could talk about that for hours um <laughs> But, um, but you actually play as her in a number of segments of the game, um, which obviously they're all stealth segments, because spoiler alert, she doesn't have superpowers. I mean, I guess that's not really a spoiler. But um, those are, I, I, I found myself both loving those segments, because they were cool, because she's doing interesting things. I don't like stealth segments in general, because I'm terrible at them. <laughs> um, but they seem to be a little bit more forgiving, um, so, I mean, definitely don't get mad and frustrated. En enjoy them, folks. Um, but yeah, that's Spider-Man. It's so good. It's so good. It you got to play it. really good. Doc, yeah. Yeah. I think you would like it. I think... <laughs> I know you don't I think have time. I would. Well, I mean, it's on the list. I will put it on the list. And if nothing else, I should at least be able to, to watch someone stream it. I can, I can make time you for that. You definitely can do that. It's worth noting, yeah. it's also a relatively short game. You know, it's... last time we spoke... I did not have a switch. Do you remember feeling so sad for me because I didn't yeah. have a switch? Did you fix that? I now have a switch, but Breath of the Wild or Breath of the Wild yeah. still in the cellophane. Yeah. Wait, so. have you put any cartridge in it yet? Yes, I a lot of Mario Kart with my daughter. She's super. Okay, that's into. fine. That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. So I have played it, but still, still Zelda. Zelda was what game of the year last year, right? Um. Behind. So believe it or not, Horizon Zero Dawn was actually my game of the year last year. Is it? And here's so here's the only reason, um, I think I'm I'm I mm -hmm. moment to moment. <laughs> no, I'm trying to explain. I have to explain this. I've had to explain this several times because a lot of people called me out. Yeah. Um, in my own personal life, um, I think that I thought longer, and I still think about 
the, the individual story beats of um, Horizon Zero Dawn. And I, I can't wait to see what's next with Horizon Zero Dawn. Whereas Legend of Zelda, like, it's over. Like, I beat it. And it was an amazing moment-to-moment experience. And it is unequivocally the best video game that Nintendo has ever made. And I think it's entirely possible that if I were to make... Like, if I were to... It, it was a one-two punch, and I had to pick one. And yeah. I picked the one that I actually sat up and thought about what it all meant. That makes sense. So I picked that one, the one that, like, really resonated with me on a story level. With that said, like, if everybody that's been like, man, I can't believe you didn't pick... <laughs> I can't believe you didn't pick, um, like, Breath of the Wild. You were raving about that for so long. It's like, well, Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's fair. It's that's still a good fair. game. Yeah, it's not a bad... I mean, exactly. That's the big thing, right? Like, yeah, it's an amazing game, and I can't really argue with it. And you know what? Have you, if you ask me, like, tomorrow, I might change my mind. But I, ha- I went on record, so yeah, I gotta, you gotta stick, stick with to it. it. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> yeah. still, I mean, you should probably open the plastic. You know, I really want to. I just moved. My daughter started school, so now I have more time because now I only have one baby at home. So it's possible that soon. soon. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, and then when you're done, by the time you're done with Legend of Zelda, it'll be like three years from now, you'll be able to get the original Spider-Man on discount while they put out Spider-Man 2. <laughs> it was going to take me three years to beat Zelda. Come on. How um how many hours have you owned it since you bought it and put and haven't even opened it up another cellophane? Because we can use that math and extrapolate. Okay, but you know, okay, we're gonna get into that now, are we, Bessie? You know, I've watched a lot of television series. I've been on a Netflix binge with like um, Legion and The Americans, and yeah, I've been watching a lot of TV. Instead. Um, I started uh the the Good Place today. So funny, and I'm like eleven episodes in. Yeah, um, and I started it today. Um, I love Kristen Bell, um, a lot, but um, but I actually uh, total non gaming thing. But I think I love Janet. Like oh. she's my <laughs> she's my waifu right now. Yeah. Um, and I everybody on my Facebook has been telling me that Janet gets even better. Um, I kind of like bad Janet. But just in a very different way. Um, that's a good show. That's just gonna make my that I, and my wife will get mad at me. Um, but I I, I kind of like Bad Janet. Um, <laughs> it, you know, it's fine. It's fine. I have weaknesses. So, um, so that Spider Man, highly recommend to just about anyone. Also, um, I don't know if you've caught, but I've been streaming World of Warcraft. I have. I so have. I've been I don't even the World of recognize Warcraft. World of Warcraft Yo, anymore. Well, I mean, here's the thing: uh, we're basically playing World of Warcraft Five. Like, they haven't made sequels. Like, people are like, "Oh, when's there going to be a World of Warcraft 2? I'm like, "Bro, they don't need to. They just yeah. every time they put out an expansion, it's basically a sequel, for the most part. I think Burning Crusade was probably just more of the same. But this game, I mean, they redo the talents every time. They add new races every time. Um, but what's really interesting is I'm not even in the new content yet. Like, I'm still playing from the beginning. Um, and so I'm actually in the Warlords of Draenor expansion right now, <laughs> which is two expansions back. So I'm playing, like, four-year-old content. And um, what's really interesting is um, that while playing through all this stuff, like, I played through Wrath of the Lich King, and I played through Pandaria, and now I'm playing through that. Like, I'm playing through the content in, like, rapid fire, and mm-hmm. so I'm actually seeing the way that they tell stories change and mm. improve. Because in the beginning, like, the story was incomprehensible. You had no idea what was going on unless you, like, sat and, like, read texts. But now it's like, no, I have an actual idea what the story was for the Mists of Pandaria. And it was actually quite good. And I kind of get what's happening in the Warlords of Draenor, like, kind of, right? Like, yeah. So, um, but yeah, I've been streaming it. And it's really meant just to be, like, a late-night, like, thing that I do. Um, but it's fun. Um, and we are actually preparing. We had a problem where our uh, work laptop ceased functioning. Um, mm. So um, that hurts us. But once that gets repaired, um, Evan is going to have a show. He's going to play a character from level 1 
all the way to the level cap, two hours at a time, once a week. Um, nice. And I think that should be pretty fun. But for, yeah, you know, World of Warcraft it's a known commodity at this point. If you if you're in, you're in. Um, yeah. But if you're not in yet, maybe don't. But I mean, if you're interested, it's really there, you can play up to level twenty for free. So it really doesn't cost you anything. Uh, I mean, oh, the good doctor is like, don't do that. Just avoid it's, it. It just, you know, if you've avoided it this long, it just sucks you. And watch the stream instead. Watch the stream instead. Two hours a week, good amount of investment in World of Warcraft. Um, to be fair, it is a lot easier to just go in, do a little thing, and then back. That's out. probably true. Vanilla WoW was super hard. They've gotten. Did you know they're bringing back vanilla servers? They're I bringing back the classic stuff. Yeah. Um, Evan said, "Well, when I do my show, should I do it on one of those?" And I was like, "No, you shouldn't. You'd hate your Definitely life." Definitely not. Yeah, you can't fly. You can't. Oh my god. No. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the um, you know, fun fact, and I'm gonna, I want to pitch this to somebody probably, but I might just, um. I think flying in World of Warcraft gave me an understanding of what a really good Superman game would be like. Mm. Because, you know, like, getting from place to place is kind of inconsequential because he can fly, but, like, I don't know. Just, it, it struck me, like, I was thinking about Superman stuff because mm -hmm. he's been in the news. Um, and just the, the flying in World of Warcraft is so... It just changes the entire dynamic of quests. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, I'm going to mm -hmm. fly up, I'm going to go over here, oh, you're a dude, I'm going to dive bomb you, I'm going to do my shenanigans, I'm going to avoid half of the mobs that are all over the place, and then I'm going to get on my flying mountain and leave. Yeah. And um, it makes, like, the whole, like, pulling and working to a specific location, like, you just don't have to do it. And then they made me do it in Warlords of Draenor because I took away flying, and I was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> Back to this, are we? Yeah, back to this. Yeah. So anyway, um, I'm trying to think what other games are relevant that we have played. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. Um, you know what's coming soon though is Valkyria Chronicles Four. Are you? Ooh, I I can sense the excitement. Are you a Valkyria Chronicles girl? Do you even know what I'm talking about? No. Let me draw you. Let me uh, paint you a picture. Um, and, and thus paint a picture for the audience also. Valkyria Chronicles. Um, Turn-based strategy game. I already like it. Set during an alternative, like a, a fantasy slash steampunk World hmm. War 2 slash 1. Hmm. You are a resident of the, and a, a member of the military in what is essentially Switzerland. War is happening around you, but you have a resource that everybody wants. Mm. Um, and so the evil empire obviously invades you. Um, the, now, there is magic in this world, but they're only controlled by these people called the, Val, the Valkyr, the Valkyries, more or less. And there are these just mythical figures that, like, you know, like nobody's ever really supposed to see. But the idea is, so the turn-based strategy is you control... Dudes on a field, there's tanks, there's snipers, there's engineers, whatever. And the idea is you can move them around, but then you have to... But then when it's time to shoot, you switch into kind of like a real-time aiming situation, and you actually aim the gun mm. and then shoot it. Um, and it's the original was on the PlayStation 3. It's recently been remastered for PC and on PS4. Um, and they sold like crazy. There was Valkyria Chronicles 1, which is on PS3, and then the other two were all on PSP. The third mm. one was never even localized in the United States. So they basically just gave up on it. Um, but then they remastered it and put it out, and like it was the number one selling game on Steam for like a couple of weeks. Like It was just a huge, or something similar to that. It was a huge deal. So now it's back, and it's getting a full release, and it's going to be on Switch. And it's nice. going to be on PS4. Um, I am very excited for that. There is a demo currently. Um, I recommend that anyone that is in... And also, it uses this really cool cartoon, like, slash between a comic and a cartoon art style, mm -hmm. like which is really neat. Um, I definitely recommend watch a YouTube video, take a look at it, but download the demo. It's on PS4 or Switch. Um the, the cool part about the demo is that if it's the first couple of chapters of the game and your your progress carries over if you buy the game. Nice. So, um, definitely looking forward to that one. Um, I played the demo a little bit. It's, you know, it's more Valkyria Chronicles. I just had to stop because Spider-Man. 
Um, so I think that's all the video games for Around the Horn. So why don't we take a break, and then we will come back and we're going to talk all about PAX East or PAX Prime. Oh, yeah. Not PAX East because you didn't do that one. PAX Although you're going to go to PAX East with me this time. Yeah, that'd be you, cool. You gotta. Because you're on the same coast. I'm on we'll the East about. Coast now. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. All yeah. right. So, folks, we're going to take a break, and then we'll be right back, and we're going to talk about PAX. All right, everybody. Welcome back to episode 148 of Engage, a family gaming podcast. Um, I am uh, here with Rachel. My BFF, the <laughs> doctor, Rachel Coward. I'm sorry. I said Rachel, and she like... You did. She I was, was like, like, whoa, where's my title, bitch? <laughs> like, no. that was the thing she did. Pardon my language, but that's the look she gave me. She was like, what are you, how dare you call me my just my first name? That's the look she gave me. Um, put some spec on it is basically what she just said to me non-verbally. So, um, so you had your, your first PAX experience, which first off amazes me that you had never been to a PAX before because PAX South is in Texas. It is. It is. I was going to go to PAX South two years ago. I was uh, accepted to be on a panel uh, and then something came up and I couldn't go. I know. And it was only, it was in San Antonio. It was only an hour and a half from where I lived. I was in Austin, but yeah, I've been spending my days at academic conferences. I don't get to do fun things like PAX, but uh, this year, this year I did. And so, um, how was it? Let's just it talk was in pretty general. Amazing. Uh, amazing, overwhelming, uh, busy, not really what I thought it would be like. I mean, I thought there would be, I don't know, more cosplay. There wasn't as much cosplay as I thought there would be. That's interesting because I go to PAX East and it's just nonstop cosplay. Is it? Yeah, it was not as much. I was, I was expecting more on that, but it was fun. It was fun. So, well, let's talk about what you. So, your ex. So, did you, I'm presuming you had expectations that were not just about the cosplay. Like, what were you expecting this con- this convention to be like? Um. Well, I was on a couple panels, and I wasn't sure necessarily like what the other panels would be like but there's all kinds of interesting things happening over there like there was a panel on how to be a better dm in dungeons and dragons and how to um use it as a tool for therapy there were all kinds of panels like that i didn't realize there was such a presence with like academia and psychologists and mental health like going on it was a surprise fair enough um to be fair, there really isn't normally that much at PAX. I think it varies depending on the show, but that's getting more and more prevalent, probably because of the work of you know Take This and other yeah. organiza- other similar organizations. Um, so um, I find it interesting that you only played one game. Okay, here's <laughs> well, this will happen. I got there. Okay, so when I got there, all my planes were delayed. It took me a ridiculous long time. First of all, I'm in Ottawa, so I traveled half, you know completely the other side of the continent but um, did you bring your switch for the plane at least i did not i did not because you flew okay. for you had like a 37 hour flight i know i flew though i left two days after i moved into my house everything is in boxes i was lucky i had like appropriate clothing i was like where's my zelda shirt i have to at least find that because i was on a panel about zelda but um yeah, so that's my excuse. I had basically nothing. And then I got there, and it took ages, so the first night was a waste. Second day was all about lines. I didn't even get any of the Final Fantasy merch I wanted. You know what, Bestie? It wasn't that good of a trip. No, it was good. But it was busy. It was busy. It was busy. You were on panels. How many panels were you on? I was on two. Um, the first, we talked about the psychology of Zelda franchise, and... Uh, it was me, a couple of psychologists, and a couple communication scholars exploring the reasons why the Zelda franchise is so enduringly satisfying. Okay, but, fair, because I thought you were going to talk about some of the psychology of the characters, which troubled me by nature of the fact that like Zelda, uh, like Link is a silent protagonist. So like, are we like, what are we dissecting there? But now I get it. Right. Like, why are people so hooked on it? So tell me, yeah. why do I love Zelda so much? Well, I mean, there's many different reasons. Uh, there was someone on That's the panel. That's a cop-out. Give me something. 
Come okay, on. there was someone. I, okay, I'll tell you, but I'll say mine first. Someone <laughs> else on the panel um, talked about the music and how the music is so um, immersing and the role that it plays. I talked about okay. Zelda herself. So Zelda is unlike any other protagonist of her era because she's the namesake of one of the largest franchises, but she's not the main character. Right, she's not Link is the main protagonist. She's not the main antagonist. She's almost like auxiliary to Link's journey. Uh, but that being said, over time Zelda has evolved. Right, she's True. becoming, making more strategic choices, becoming more analytical. I heard in Breath of the Wild she gets pants. I mean, this is a big deal because she does in fact have some pants. She's super British. See? See? Super British. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> that made me laugh. So, um, yeah, so I talked about how Zelda being an evolving character and how it is reflecting the evolution that women in Western societies are also having now is one of the reasons why she continues to be so intriguing. So that panel, long story short, although that wasn't really short, um, was about that. Oh, no, (laughs) I'm the host of this podcast. That was definitely short. Go on. Okay. Um, and then I was a second panel on video game addiction, which we've talked about previously. Sure, sure. So how, how, nothing there. So how was the attendance at the addiction panel? Did you get a fair number good. of people? It was good. Although, so Dr. B, who is the clinical director of Take This, he was the chair of that panel. Uh-huh. And he's talking, and he sees that everyone's, like, nodding to the introduction. He was like, quick question. Like, how many people here are psychology majors? And it was, like, all of them. And we were like, oh, my goodness. Okay. Didn't realize we were in like a room of our peers. Um, so that was funny. But So well, did that change the – did you guys – were you thinking on your feet that that kind of changed the way you were addressing the audience? It might have made us – yeah, I think it made us more relaxed with being more technical with our definitions and what we were talking about. Um, no one sure. like expected it to be full of psychologists. Um, I totally would have. Um, really? <laughs> yeah. So – but that's cool that people went to your show. I mean, yeah, no, it was great. So, um, so you did your panels. You went to a bunch of other ones. You met up with some fellow nerds. I met a lot of nerds. A lot of I met most of the crew of Take This, who I've only known um, electronically, and I met them in person, and they're all as wonderful and amazing and fantastic as you would imagine them being. Uh, if you don't know what that is, you should link that for all the people. Oh, I've had Susan Arndt on the show. Oh, okay. Yes. She's amazing. Yes, did you meet her? All amazing. Yes. You did? Isn't she great? Yes. Was she wearing her N7 hoodie? Was she? She was wearing a hoodie. Well, I mean, that's what she does when she's at the pot, at the at the packs. She wears yeah. the hoodie. Um, Susan is great. Um, I was sad when she stopped working in games. Um, but it's just hard to make a living writing as a games writer, but she is, uh, she's great. I, I hope one day to have an opportunity to have her on the show again. Um, but no, for those that don't know, take this.org is a charity that raises money and provides services at conventions, but their, their overall goal is to raise awareness within the gaming community and in its periphery about mental illness and its dangers and the fact that there is support everywhere. Um, and one of the reasons why there's support everywhere is because they try to actually provide it. Um, so they actually yeah. provide the AFK room at conventions. They actually had one at E3. I could not find it. I desperately wanted to use it at one point. <laughs> um, yeah. but I couldn't find it just because E3 is so huge. Um, but I, there is no way I would make it through a PAX without sitting in the AFK room for 15, 20 minutes every day. Um, yep. You know, you recharge yourself just like you recharge your cell phone. Um, you do, and that room was so nice. I went there the first day after it was like noise overload. I was like, where is it? I know right? it's around here. And they have actual clinicians there. So, like, if you're they having, do. you know, because there are some people that, you know, there's some people in the gaming world that have serious anxiety problems or don't know that they have serious anxiety problems. And if you don't know that you have a problem with crowds and, you know, the biggest crowd you've ever seen is at a high school football game, and then you roll into packs, and there's like 40,000 people there. Um, it can be super problematic, and hopefully an enforcer will scoop you up and bring you in there, and they have an actual clinician, and they will take care of you, and they will get you the help you need. Um, it's an amazing service that they provide, um, and so, yeah, I'm glad that you, I'm glad that you met them. 
Um, yeah. And um, because I would have told you to meet them if you didn't, because uh, they're, they're super great. great. Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah. Um, so overall impressions, right? Let's just talk about it. Like this, that's a big show. Is this the kind of thing that you would yeah. want to do again? Or I would definitely do it again. Uh, I'm submitting for PAX South actually. So obviously I'm, <laughs> I guess I'm willing to do it again. I think it's just such a different vibe. Like I was saying, I'm so used to going to academic conferences and being super technical and super scientific. And it's nice to just talk to people a little more casually who are just generally interested in this whole world of like game studies and psychology of games. And yeah, I would definitely do it again. Fair maybe enough. on the, maybe the East though. Cause it was a long travel to the, let to me tell you, uh, Boston's beautiful in April. Never been, never been, never been to Boston. No. Never... Okay. So we're going to make plans. Boston. We'll make, we'll, I mean, it, it will we'll we'll have like rooms next door to each other i think it'd be weird to share a room um <laughs> yeah. we'll have rooms next to each other we can and send code through the walls you know we, yeah, are we can be i mean exactly we're bffs yeah. we'd be able to communicate yeah. for sure nonverbal communication um and then we can go and then i'll show you how to play games at a convention oh shut up i know how to play games at a convention you wait in the line for ages i wasn't um, willing to do that homie um there are <laughs> ways to do it and it's okay. fine um the way you do it is um you uh make appointments ahead of time through me that's how you do it because i make appointments. oh you see i didn't have the connection i so. give you the hookup homie, well listen, now i know now i know you're part of the team so oh you i help. know all right um so um <laughs> All me being stupid aside. So that was PAX. Um, I love PAX. I find it funny that you're going to go to PAX South after you left Texas. I know. It's but stupid. But... <laughs> that's just how the that's how the universe works. Come I know. on. You know how that goes. So, so let's talk about – so one of the things that came about as a result of your trip to PAX is yeah. you played your first game of Dungeons & Dragons. So first, tell me how this came about because this must have been like a networking thing. It was. So um, Dr. Megan Connell, which is one of the people I met at PAX, she um, is a DM and she does a Twitch show called Clinical Role. Not Critical Role. So, Clinical Role. Cool. Um, so she's the DM and she hosts a game every week and the participants are mental health professionals who focus on games and are using games therapeutically and or games researchers. Um, so I met her and she was really nice and we I talked to her for two days before D&D &D even came up and she was like, you have never played? And I was like, nope. So I've always wanted to. I've always been in like the right circles. It's just never happened. And she is a clinician so i felt like well if anyone can walk me through it and so i don't feel stupid it would be her um she was real patient and last week we did um what did she call it like episode zero or game zero to make my character and then i had my first game the next day how about that now yeah. we missed we missed an important piece which is um when all of a sudden my twitter dm oh. started blowing <laughs> up uh because oh, yes. you were a f you were having some concerns. I was. I was my best. You know, you came to the rest of the D and Ds. Yes, yes. <laughs> I was having a bit of imposter syndrome. You know, it's you're going to be on Twitch. You're going to be with other people who've played before. You don't want to be a fool. I actually told my husband. I was like, I think because I watched an episode of. Um, clinical role before I did it and I was like I don't think I can do this I was like I think it's not made for people who are introverted and he turned to me he was like it's exactly who this game was made for I was like okay so that's one for it um what's uh, I and I I approve of that so let me tell the story from my perspective so <laughs> oh, um all I'm just hanging out at my house and all of a sudden my twitter dms just start getting blown up um, by this crazy lady I know. Oh, um, and my wife's like, right. who's PMing you on Twitter? I'm like, it's cool. It's just Rachel. <laughs> um, she knows me. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I know. Oh, of course. it's yeah. it. You've met my wife. She gives me yeah. crap about literally everything. So she's like, who are you talking to? I'm like, it's Rachel from Canada. <laughs> um, so um, 
And so we were talking. Eventually, I was like, you know what? Just call me. And you did. And I went outside, and we chatted, and um, we, we had a nice discussion. I, I, for the first time in my life, I was nervous explaining alignment, which to those folks that are uninitiated, alignment is like, are you a good guy or are you a bad guy kind of stuff in Dungeons & Dragons. But explaining that to a person smarter than I am oh, sure. <laughs> um, was intimidating a little bit. Now, you may not have noticed that because I, no. you know, I put on this air of, you know, it's fake until you make it, buddy, just so you know. Um, but I was like, oh, my God, I'm explaining alignment to the Dr. Rachel Coward. Like, <laughs> and um, I think I did an okay job. You did. And I was. I felt prepared. Good. And so... Um, because the best part is, I explained it, and at the end of it, I said, and it doesn't, and none of that matters. And yeah. was I right? None of it mattered. None of it mattered. None of it mattered. No. Yeah. So, because none of it does. None of it does. But, um, it is, um, now you understand, like, 15% more of the memes that you see on Twitter, though. True. Because right? you see all the alignment things that used to never make sense to you. Now you can be like, oh, okay, I get it. That's um, true. So, um, so you're welcome. Um, Thank you. And so th- my only thing is you never told me that your episode aired. It did. Because you did. were supposed to tell me so that I could watch it. I was too embarrassed. <laughs> but to share with me. No, it's up. But you can watch BFS. it. Well, now you I have to watch. I wanted to watch and... live. You and I all your watch it live. And watch. You know, I was, I felt, I think I got into the swing of things. It was a three hour game. I was definitely apprehensive you know, the first half of it. Cause I just felt like it was weird. Like at one point, so she's telling the story and it was me and a, and a guest um, that she's had on before who was obviously, he runs like a charity. He's really into tabletop gaming. He's like, obviously played this for like 20 years. Sure. And she's like, okay, so you see, so my character's name is Enkai. She's like, you see Enkai climbing uh, the mountain. And he was like, well, what color is her hair? And so she turns to me, she's like, what color is your hair? And I just looked at her. I was like, what? <laughs> And she was like, "What's your character? You tell me." And just the open endedness of it all was just like overwhelming. I was like, oh, "I don't know, her hair's blue, and, you know, <laughs> whatever." And then it, I got more comfortable from there. But I think it's just you have to throw yourself in. I mean, you definitely do. Yeah. Granted, it is easy for me to say because I LARP. <laughs> Well, oh, see. you're on the East Coast now. You can come LARP with me. Oh, my God. That's a, the anxiety in my stomach when you even mention that. Although I would. I think I would. That's what I was thinking when I was playing D&D. Like, oh, this is like LARPing except on a smaller scale. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You should come LARP with me. We'll figure this out. Yeah. Um, because, All the plan. you know, you're only like a million hours into the frozen north. You, you're fine. You can put on your mucklucks and like, you know, snowshoes and. Have your polar bear driven snow, you know, like, you know, just go. You know, I hear in Ottawa, there's a lot of snow in the winter because yeah, we're in a valley. Yeah, you're going to get stuck in your house for like weeks at a time. Then you can play Legend of Zelda. That'd be great. You see, the winter will just be my time to exactly. shine. Yeah. So, the, so, dun- so your first Dungeons and Dragons experience. Yes. So how did she teach you? Because that was something that I didn't know how you were going to learn because they didn't even give you a rule book. No, they did not. <laughs> no. Um, well, go watch that. Episode. She was very <laughs> well, kind want, about it. I want you to explain it because this is... Um, how she didn't teach me how to play. She kind of just... She's very good storyteller. Very good. So she's telling a story and I'm super into it. And then she'd be like, okay, and what do you do? And I'm like, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Um... So I think she just started off slow. She started the storyline with the other character. She worked me in. We did a battle. We fought some basilisks. My boomerang was broken, I think, because it kept missing. Um, and then that was the end. So I don't know. She didn't really teach me. I just jumped in. My broken Which boomerang. Is, you got a, bo- a broken boomerang. My Sucked. broken boomerang is totally the name of my <laughs> folk band. <laughs> my broken boomerang um uh yeah she put up the stats for the boomerang and i was like why would anyone use that well, i'm um, a level two i'm a level three now she leveled me up oh isn't that nice of her i still don't know why anyone would use a boomerang um but 
That's fine. Did you now? Here's a question: Did you want to use a boomerang and then she made stats for it, or did no. she suggest the boomerang to you? No, she didn't suggest any. She gave me options for weapons, oh, and right. I'm a water genasi, and I'm a druid, and I'm a sailor, right? Seafaring boomerang seemed to make sense to me. I said, well, for the story's sake, I think she'd have a boomerang. Sure, why not? That makes sense. Why not? I have a staff too. Listen, I don't. I didn't know how you did that shenanigans. I don't know. Yeah, like, no. She gave I, me all the options. That's that's up to you. You can watch that too. <laughs> I'm gonna watch it, but we can't watch it within the context of this show. <laughs> no, so I'm just... no. But the boomerang is sweet. Don't hate on the boomerang. I mean, when I go, <laughs> I mean, you broke it. So how sweet can it be? I mean, it didn't break, but it wasn't hitting the basilisk. It only hit it like once, and I was like, man, stupid boomerang. Did you then go hit it with a stick? I did with my staff. Yeah. So you hit it with yeah. a stick. When in doubt, hit the thing with a stick. Yeah. Um. That that's like the answer to most of life's problems. Life lesson. I know. Hit it with a stick. So, um. So that's Dungeons and Dragons. We. What's funny is we've been thinking about getting things started here, um. And possibly even live streaming some of that. Um. Although I think I might just record it and edit through it. But the idea of playing through because the um the 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 Wizards of the Coast boxed adventures. Like the the books that they give that they put out with like their pre made products, mm-hmm. from what I understand, and for my listeners, I'm reaching out to Wizards soon to see if they'll send me a copy of the new one. Um, it's set in Waterdeep, which is this super famous city within um, you know the Forgotten Realms campaign setting, um, and it's just this massive like metropolis which exists inside of a fantasy world, which is a unique place to be because normally when mm-hmm. you think of a fantasy world you think of like you know like medieval Europe you don't mm-hmm. think of like oh well there's Manhattan right you know you don't think of that so um and it's set there and it's like about a heist so it's you know and apparently according to Polygon it is the perfect onboarding point for oh. um new uh new players uh which I find fascinating um so we're hoping to uh you know, kind of knock some of that out because my kids want to play, and obviously my wife loves to play. Um, and so I could dungeon master for the three of them, and I think we that would enjoy be ourselves. cool. Yeah, um, it's just a matter of you know. But, but then the other side of me is like, maybe I wait until Maggie's a little older, maybe let her play. But we don't know. We haven't quite decided. Um, but I'm definitely going to be looking at that um, setting, and even crazier, they're putting out an, a campaign setting that is based in Ravnica. Which you probably, which is the Magic the Gathering campaign world, like not a campaign mm-hmm. world, but that's the, but it's so there's a crossover between the one of the Magic the Gathering worlds and Dungeons and Dragons, which I asked one of my friends what he thought about it, and he's f- played Dungeons and Dragons and Magic forever, um, and he's like about damn time. That's oh. the only thing <laughs> I have to say about it, because um, I mean I just think it's such a cool world. Um, if you ever are bored, go look up the lore behind Ravnica. It's called the City of Guilds. Um, it's all these different guilds that all have very different philosophies on how life should work and whether life should work. Um, and because um, some of them are pretty dark, um, and it's super interesting um, being able, you know, being able to like create a character that's like in some of these guilds. I think it's super fascinating. Yeah. Um, and it's about damn time that they've made a boxed product like that's set in that world. It's such a cool crossover. So I'll be looking into that too. That's coming out towards the end of the year. Um, so yeah, that's not, I mean, I'm super proud that, that you, uh, I knew you had it in you. Oh, thanks. Thanks for your help. I'm a little, I will, I will say I'm a little hurt that you didn't tell me. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't tell you. I didn't have much advance notice that it was happening. I was told that morning that it was happening that evening, but I I'm sorry. Um, you you can tweet me at any time. I did I tweet about now it. Now you even have my yeah, but I don't read Twitter constantly. <laughs> um, you also have my phone number now, so next time you're gonna have well, a random Dungeons and Dragons game, just yeah. text me. It's okay. Yeah. I'll just All be right. like, hey BFF, D and D on Twitch, fifteen minutes. I'll find a way. Okay. I will find a way because I don't want to miss it. I could have left all sorts of comments. You could. I, I know that would be nice. That and would I was going nice. to be your man in the chair. Like, I know. You, uh, I could have used you. You'll see. I was. Listen. I would have helped you, but you were ashamed, and you should not feel shame with me because we're BFFs. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, um, so with that said, folks, I think we're we're running out of time. Um, so don't worry, don't worry, folks. Uh, I know you love listening to me and Rachel have witty banter. So um, I'm gonna have her back on, like maybe after she actually like plays a game. Oh, oh snap! Burn. Did I just say no? Well, you played Mario Kart with your daughter. Um, I played a lot of Mario Kart. So um, maybe you and I just have to have a battle. I think we need to have a Mario Kart challenge. Pretty good. I'm pretty good. And I have played the new Ratchet and Clank. I've played some games, but with my daughter. Not really for me. Playing games with your daughter is super cool. The new Ratchet and Clank is pretty sweet. Isn't although the games always are. I mean, I've not, I haven't played one that I don't enjoy, to be honest. But Yeah. Have you? Have yeah. you, did you do you have Final Fantasy XV in your home yet? It's in my home. Man, I think you got to do that one too. Here's what's really good. You no, know I do. They keep adding so much stuff to it that, like, that I'll never, ever, ever, ever finish it. You no, because they're gonna run out of stuff to put in it. Are you gonna play Kingdom Hearts in January? I here I am. I started closing it, and now we're done. Okay. Are you gonna play Kingdom Hearts? Where, where do you I stand on Kingdom Hearts? I love Kingdom Hearts. I've only ever played the first one, and I know there's been a lot in between. But you know, Final Fantasy is my priority. Honestly, I played them all except for 15, and 15 is sitting there waiting for me. That is my jam, and I. So you're really... never gonna play Kingdom Hearts. You know, when I'm like a thousand years old and retired, maybe. I have no time. I have two kids under five. I have no time. And I'm working. I mean, part of that's your fault. I'm I mean, saying. I did make two children. That's yeah, true. Yeah, you built two people. I mean, what the I heck? did, and now I have to care for them. And, I mean, and the true. little one is only one. At least Zoe, at least my daughter, ooh, at least my daughter can play games. Um, my she son She would yet. absolutely love to watch you play Kingdom Hearts. Does she like Disney characters? She would. She would. Yeah, she does. So, I mean, there's that. That's true. you know, like, Baymax is in it. But she likes to play, so that's why we did Ratchet and Clank. Like, I'm I don't down. know. Can, I you think it. that she can um, navigate Kingdom Hearts? I don't know. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> but, but there is, and I've had some success with this with my kids, the idea of playing a game and letting them tell you where to go. It takes patience. But, like, you be the controller. It's like, no, go get that yeah. guy. Go here. Do this thing. Look at that. Jump over here. Yeah. That and could be fun. So, anyway. Yeah. Now, officially, I believe we are running out of time. Okay. So, folks, That's I do fun. appreciate you listening. I hope you enjoyed our podcast as much as the Dr. Rachel Cowart and I liked lis- uh, like recording it, rather. Um, so... We'll be back next week. Uh, we're going to be talking um, and next week. Actually, we're going to have another video game podcast. I have un- so we're kind of mixing things up a little bit. Next week, I'm going to have my girl from GameStop, who will be a regular co-host, starting next week. Yes, that is right. Tila will actually be joining the show. She can talk about a little game called Dragon Quest Eleven: Echoes of an Elusive Age. Yes, that is an actual video game title that was released in 2018, among other things. And I'm sure I'll talk about Spider-Man. So, um, but before we sign off, I do have one serious favor to ask. So, two specifically. One, I stand here. Well, I'm really sitting. Definitely not standing. I'm sitting. Asking, He's sitting. I can I'm, see th- him. She can see me. I'm definitely <laughs> sitting um, with hat in hand. And this is a favor that I've asked before, but I'm going to ask it again. Um... Everyone listening to this podcast knows one person. I'm sure you do know one person who would benefit from listening to this show or who would enjoy listening to this show. I would encourage you to maybe show them the link or tell them to find us on iTunes, etc. Um, let's get this podcast in front of more people because a bigger audience for me means I can get bigger guests and I can do bigger things. Not like the Dr. Rachel Coward is not the coolest guest on earth. However, she and I would love to talk to bigger people. Uh, yeah. So, um, so please share that out. And my second, um, you know, request is this: Engage Family Gaming is funded on Patreon. Patreon is a website on the internet where you can essentially pledge support to creatives. Um, with as little as a dollar a month. If you really like the work that we do, please consider going to patreon.com slash engagedfamilygaming and pledging even a dollar. Um, there are 
some stretch goals with some really cool ideas and there are options to pledge more but a dollar would mean the world to us uh, because that's you know that, that that's how we keep the lights on so those are my two asks um i hope you don't mind um un and until next week i hope you have a great week and uh don't forget to get your family game on this is steven and rachel signing off bye bye cool. Thank you for listening to Engage, a family gaming podcast. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Tune in next week.